Welcome back to Sirius Speedway. Personally, I think we got hosed on that call. With your host, Dave Moody and Angie Skinner. Headed to the hotline for our weekly conversation with the driver of the uh, number 31 Exide Batteries Fraternal Order of Eagles Chevrolet this past weekend at Kentucky. James Busher is with us. Hey, man, how are you? Hey, how's it going today? Uh, not too bad. Uh, pretty good night of uh, uh, flying high in the old uh, fraternal, fraternal Order of Eagles Chevrolet. Another good top 10 finish and a good night in the points for you. It was definitely uh, a really solid night for us. You know, like you said, we finished top 10 and, uh, you know, I really didn't think that we were having all that great of a night. We kind of got off on our pit strategy and uh, we were, we were kind of off sequence with most of the field and uh, there's only a few guys on our same pit strategy and it, it really didn't play out to our advantage, but we came from the back a couple of times and, and finished right there in ninth. And, uh, you know, our, our truck was, was probably a top five truck at the end of the race, but had a couple of weight race altercations and, uh, you know, just, just wasn't there at the end. And, and we, we had old tires and, and just wasn't able to, to hold on to, to get in the top five, those late race restarts. So, um, for us to have a mediocre night and, uh, and gain up, gain a bunch of points on the lead, uh, was, was a really good night for us on our XA batteries, FOE Chevy. Gained a bunch of points on the lead and gained three positions in the standings. Went from seventh to fourth in points, just 32 behind Johnny Sauter. Now, I know I, th- I know 32 is the better part of a whole race, but all it takes, and we don't wish any good bad luck on anybody, but all it takes is for Sauter to stick one on the fence on lap nine, and all of a sudden you're right back in the ballgame. Well, I think, uh, you know, we've been making steady gains, you know, week after week, and, uh, you know, the last – last uh you know stretch of races ever since nashville we've really been gaining each and every week and uh we got all the way up to seventh and we stayed there a couple weeks in a row um and and gained a lot of points just no positions and then in kentucky we gained a bunch of positions and um you know we're all the way up to fourth which is uh i think pretty good for for having missed a race at phoenix in the beginning of the year and like you said we're 32 out and for me, uh, yeah, 32 points is a lot of points, but this new point system, we've gained 28 in the last two races. So I'm not saying that we're out of it because we still have 15 races left to go. There's a lot of racing left to do, and we just have to keep doing what we've been doing these last uh, you know, seven races or so, and uh, we'll be in pretty good shape. If you outperform them by three points, by three spots per race, you'll, you'll win the championship. That's all it takes, uh, and then some. You'll with room to spare. I... Uh, I know that all the guys at Turner Motorsports know that we're we're digging hard and they're all working really hard to uh to try to go after this championship and you know we've got really good trucks, really good sponsors and uh you know I think we still got a shot at it and uh you know going into Nashville like I said we were 20th in points so to be fourth right now is we've come a long way and uh our team seems to keep getting better each and every week and uh you know a bad night we turn it into a top 10 so I think that's what you got to have to to win a championship and I think we're on the right track. I know we talk about this with some regularity here, but I just continue to be impressed with the across-the-board effort being put forth by Turner Motorsports, a, a very new team in the grand scheme of things, uh, to be you know leading points you know uh, about half the time in the nationwide series, to be right there challenging for championships in the truck series, to have multiple nationwide and truck series entries all running up front, all contending for wins. Steve Turner's got to be just button busting proud of the way his teams have have performed this year. I know I would be proud of it. You know, like you said, all the cars have been performing really well. The nationwide guys have have won a couple races this year and. Uh, you know, we got our poll at, at Texas and we've been really close to winning a lot of truck races. And, uh, you know, like you said, it's not just one team out of the, out of the multiple teams. It's, it's every team running really well. And, uh, you know, the 32 and the four both run really well each and every week. And we're always, you know, really equal on the speed charts and practice. So, and we always seem to qualify fairly close to each other. So, um, you know, I think everything's pretty fair from team to team and, uh, you know, it's a, a great organization that's like you said, been built over a short period of time. Back to the uh, to the fields of Iowa on Saturday night and Iowa Speedway. How's that track on your personal preference list? I really like the racetrack. It's a great facility, and uh, you know it's one of the newer ones that we go to. And I like that it it's not the mile and a half racetracks where you have to hold it wide open 
and uh, you know if you can't hold it wide open in the center of the corner, you're going to be a little off. It's one, it's kind of a cross between those type of tracks and a and a short track. So um, there's good race, and it, it's you know it's tough to pass because you can use both lanes, and uh, you know it's a really fun racetrack for me. And I think uh, I've been fast there in the past, and and I ran pretty well there in the nationwide car earlier this year. So. I think that we should have a really good Wolfpack Rental Chevy this weekend and uh, wouldn't expect any different than uh, to be running up front. Is it one of those tracks where, where you can you can run a guy down from half a county away, but then when you get to a couple of truck lengths behind, all of a sudden things get a whole lot more difficult? They definitely get more difficult and yeah. it, because you can move around and, and still have speed. And uh, you can, you, like I said, you can run the top, you can run the bottom, you're on the middle. And... Uh, there's there's a couple multiple grooves, so you can run side by side, lap after lap. I remember in the nationwide race earlier in the in the spring, and Austin Dillon and I in the closing laps of the race ran side by side for about ten laps for uh, I think eighth or ninth. So um, you know it, it it is somewhere where you can run side by side without having to lean on each other and you know knock the fenders off these cars. And I think it's a really fun facility. We get on now. I mean, we're in the month of, of July. We're getting close to halfway through this deal. As you continue to gain experience on these bigger tracks and in the truck series, talk a little bit about the the learning curve. Because in in watching you on the racetrack and in watching some of the other you know young drivers, Ricky Carmichael, your your teammate at Turner Motorsports, in watching you guys over the last year or so, it seems like now you've evolved to the point where you've got a really good command of the race craft of how to put together a 200 or 250 or even a 300 mile race, that it's not just stump and steer anymore, that you guys are out there with an overall game plan of how to win these races. Absolutely. And it's like you said, you have to, to learn that over time. And I think just experience is into that. So for me, I think I'm to the point where I understand the longer races more and how to, how the pit strategy has to work and that you don't have to go as fast as possible, you know, from lap one, you have to go right away on the restarts. It seems like that's where it seems like if you're, if you've lost track position, that's where you're going to gain the most track position back is the first five or six laps after a restart when everything's nice and cool. And then once it gets strung out, it takes longer to pass multiple cars. So uh, you really, uh, you just have to, to play play your cards right and if you don't have the right pit strategy you have to overcome it and uh if you run into problems you have to be able to overcome it and not right. not give up and and like at texas we had a lot of damage on our truck and came back for a ninth place finish and we were probably 17th place truck after the damage so right. uh you know late race restarts and and all that you just have to be able to take advantage of and uh i think I've, that's something that i've been getting better and better at like you said and um you know i i know for me, looking back on on my personal racecraft, I know I've been uh, getting better over the years, and uh, I think it's come a long way. What's been the toughest thing for you to learn along the way? Uh, probably, you know, I would say never give up. You know, right? There's a lot of these these times that you knock the fenders in, and and you get a lot of damage, and maybe you're missing a quarter panel or the back bumper or something, and uh, you know, it's really easy to say, well, we're done, guys, just pack it up. But you can do that if you're not racing for points. But if you're going to go out to the points championship, you have to turn a bad race into a 10th place finish. And, uh, you know, that's what it boils down to because a 30th place finish is going to kill you in the standing. So, uh, you know, we, we crashed out of Martinsville, finished, I think, dead last and, and missed a race at Phoenix. And besides those two races, we've been in the top 10 every week. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, even the races that we've had problems at, there's multiple races. I mean, we got in a wreck at Daytona and finished in the top 10. Texas, we finished in the top 10. Uh, came back from a lot of adversity at uh, Dover and and came back for a solid finish. So there's there's uh, multiple races that we could have just called it quits and said, okay, we're going to finish about 15th to 20th today. And we we fought hard and played the strategy and fixed the truck up best we could and and got all the spots we could gain. And uh, you know it's worked out well for us. We climbed all the way up to fourth in the standings, and uh, I don't think we're done yet. I think you guys are the kings of overcoming adversity, and it's making you guys very tough to deal with because if you – I mean, if sitting fourth and missing the race in Phoenix – Well, that's right. Dead last in imagine. one and didn't race in another, and you're yeah. still fourth uh, out of ten races? I mean, you've missed 20% of the shows, and you're fourth in points. It's unbelievable. 
Yeah, it definitely is. And uh, like I said, that shows the depth of our team and, and, you know, how much we've grown over the past, you know, year and a half, two years of, of when Turner Motorsports got started. So um, I think, I think we've got a shot at this championship and I know that, you know, all my guys are, are behind me a hundred percent and they're not going to give up till, uh, till the end of the year. Well, we count on that and we expect nothing less from you. We'll, uh, we'll be watching this weekend, Saturday night in Iowa, uh, best of luck. And hopefully we can, uh, we can be back here, uh, next Wednesday talking about your first truck series win. I really hope so. We'll see what happens this weekend in Iowa. All right, buddy, go get them. Thank you. All right. Thank you. James Busher, Exide Batteries, Wolfpack Rentals, Chevrolet, uh, up to the number four spot.